Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the life, death, and personality of Queen Elizabeth II? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of Queen Elizabeth II, and move to my analysis. Queen Elizabeth II was born in London on April 21, 1926. At that time, she was Princess Elizabeth of York. She was the first child of the Duke and Duchess of York. She had a sister who was born in 1930, named Princess Margaret. Elizabeth was born during the reign of her paternal grandfather, King George V. She was third in line of succession to the British throne, but no one ever thought she would be queen. Her father's brother Edward was next in line, and people thought he would probably have children, which would have pushed Elizabeth further back in line. In January 1936, King George V died, and Elizabeth's father's brother Edward became King Edward VIII. In December of the same year, Edward abdicated the throne in order to marry an American woman named Wallace Simpson. This meant that Elizabeth's father became King George VI, and that Elizabeth was next in line for the throne. Growing up, Elizabeth spent a lot of time with her sister, Princess Margaret. At the end of World War II, they went out in public on one occasion to join in the celebrations, but no one recognized them. In 1947, Elizabeth went on tour of Southern Africa with her parents. She made a radio broadcast for her 21st birthday, saying, quote, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong, unquote. That same year, Elizabeth became engaged to Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark. Right before they married, on November 20, 1947, Philip became Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. About a year later, Elizabeth gave birth to Prince Charles. Elizabeth had Princess Anne in August of 1950. By this point, Elizabeth's father wasn't doing too well as far as his health. Everybody sensed that Elizabeth would be receiving a promotion in the near future. She started to fill in for her father at public events. King George VI died on February 6, 1952, at which time 25-year-old Elizabeth ascended to the throne and became Queen Elizabeth II. She was in Kenya when her husband, Prince Philip, informed her about her father's death. In February 1960, Elizabeth gave birth to Prince Andrew. In March 1964, she had Prince Edward. Over the next several decades, Elizabeth was involved in a number of events and dealt with various issues. Just a few examples. The mining disaster in Wales in 1966, which killed 116 children and 28 adults. The marriage of Prince Charles and Diana, Princess of Wales, in 1981. Elizabeth met with Pope John Paul II during his visit to Britain in 1982. There was a visit to China in 1986, a baseball game with George H.W. Bush in 1991, the failure of the marriage between Charles and Diana when they separated in 1992, Diana's death in 1997, the loss of both her sister, Princess Margaret, and her mother in 2002, a visit with George W. Bush in 2007, her grandson William married Kate Middleton in 2011. In 2018, Elizabeth had to contend with the marriage of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and all the drama they created in the years following. On April 9, 2021, Elizabeth's husband, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, died at the age of 99. Elizabeth had her Platinum Jubilee in February of 2022, marking her 70 years on the throne. Queen Elizabeth II died on September 8, 2022, at the age of 96. Her reign spanned 15 British prime ministers and 14 U.S. presidents. Her son Charles is now King Charles III, and his wife Camilla is Queen Consort. Now moving to my analysis. Queen Elizabeth II was generally well regarded by the public throughout her reign. For example, in 2012, her approval rating in the United Kingdom was 90%. Elizabeth was viewed favorably by people in other countries as well. In 2021, 
One survey indicated that she was the third most admired woman in the world. Elizabeth's personality remains somewhat of a mystery. She did not share her personal opinions publicly. As a matter of policy, she never talked about political views either. Elizabeth never gave a single press interview. Much of what is known about her personality has come from the impressions of people who met her. When Elizabeth was young, she was described as being responsible, orderly, sensible, and well-behaved. She loved dogs and horses. Winston Churchill said that Elizabeth had an air of authority and reflectiveness even when she was an infant. Some people described Elizabeth as having a quiet dignity and calmness. As the world around her changed drastically in 70 years, she did not change that much. One could argue that she became slightly more emotional in her later years, as she was seen smiling, laughing, and even crying in public, but in general, she was a stabilizing force. As I mentioned, there's not much information available about Elizabeth's personality, which is actually a testament to her character in the context of her job. But here are my thoughts on what her personality may have been like. I think Elizabeth had mid-range to low openness to experience. She valued tradition and did not live in a world of fantasy. Her level of conscientiousness was high. She valued order and had a phenomenal work ethic. As far as extroversion, I think Elizabeth was probably mid-range. People who knew her described her as having positive emotions, but at the same time, she appeared to be analytical and reserved. I think Elizabeth had a higher than average level of agreeableness, like she was straightforward, modest, and altruistic, although she was willing to disagree with people when she needed to. Moving to the last trait, neuroticism, Elizabeth appeared to be below average. She did not appear to be angry, anxious, or depressed. There were a few stressful events that occurred to Elizabeth where she remained incredibly calm. For example, in 1981, a man discharged a pistol loaded with blanks right near Elizabeth when she was riding a horse. She kept control of the horse. This is impressive considering that most horses are not members of the Loud Noise fan club. In 1982, a man broke into her bedroom in Buckingham Palace. He was carrying a piece of glass from a broken ashtray. Elizabeth remained calm and called for help. She was finally rescued by two police officers and a footman. What stands out with the personality of Elizabeth is not only the traits that she possessed, but those that were absent. Elizabeth was told from a young age that she was special, simply because she was born into a certain family. This must have been as confusing to her as it is to everyone else. Later, when her uncle abdicated the throne, she became even more special, because everyone knew that someday she would be queen. And finally, when her father died, she ascended to the throne. The entire time, Elizabeth resisted being narcissistic. She never gave in to the fantasy of her own specialness. She realized that she was just a person, but she was a person with an unusual job, and therefore an unusual opportunity to make positive changes. She made the most of this. Elizabeth never lashed out at her critics. She was not insecure or vindictive. Not every member of the royal family would fit with that archetype, so to speak. Elizabeth really stood out as a member of the royal family in a positive way. She respected her role in the royal family and stayed out of trouble as other royal family members had repeated problems. Just a few examples. Princess Margaret had several extramarital affairs. She drank excessively and appeared to be envious of the queen. When Prince Charles was married to Diana, he appeared to be interested in another woman named Camilla, who he married in 2005. Prince Andrew found himself in trouble with allegations of inappropriate behavior, which involved Jeffrey Epstein, and he appeared to have an inability to stop talking. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle rebelled against the royal family in an effort to convince the world they are the ultimate victims. And even Prince Philip, who was relatively grounded compared to many other members of the royal family, found himself in trouble by making a number of offensive and witty statements. Most of his statements were actually only offensive to those who are oversensitive. Some of them were pretty funny. Just one example, Philip once met a man who introduced his wife, who had a PhD, by saying, she is much more important than I am. Philip replied, we have the same problem in our family. Elizabeth did not let Philip have a monopoly on humorous statements, however. One time in the 1960s, 
She was attending an annual Royal Variety performance and watching the Everly Brothers sing the song, Kathy's Clown. Elizabeth turned to her lady-in-waiting and said, they sounded like two cats being strangled. I was curious about her assessment, so I listened to the song. She was actually being generous. As the members of the royal family were attracting attention, Elizabeth was happy and felt obligated to remain a bit of a mystery. She did not want to be in the spotlight. She did not let her emotions dictate her behavior. She understood something that very few leaders understand these days. The job of being a leader is about service. It's not about being the center of attention, and it's not about trying to prove oneself better than others. Elizabeth was willing to put the job ahead of her own opinions and desires. She was an ordinary person born into an extraordinary situation, an example of a leader who rose to the occasion with grace and courage. Queen Elizabeth II cemented her place in history as a role model for leaders around the world. Those are my thoughts on the life, death, and personality of Queen Elizabeth II. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.